This is Walter Bosley, and I'll be reading a selection from The Secret Message of Jules Verne by Michel Lamy. The King of the World and the Black Powers Any discussion of these theories of the underground must include Agartha and the King of the World. In fact, the posthumous work by St. Eve's Dalvedra, published in 1910, entitled Mission of India, contains the description of a mysterious underground kingdom, Agartha with two T's. Ruling the mysterious people living in the cavities of the earth is a mysterious king of the world, whose envoys, the secret chiefs, are acting on the governments of the lands on the earth's surface. The best source concerning the enigmatic Agartha is the book by Fernand Ossendowski, Animal, Men, and Gods. A Buddhist prince declared to Ossendowski, quoting, This kingdom is Agarti. It extends through every underground tunnel in the entire world. I heard a Chinese Lama scholar tell Bogdo Khan that ancient peoples who disappeared under the earth inhabit all the subterranean caverns of America. Traces of them can still be discovered on the world's surface. These subterranean peoples and races recognize the sovereignty of the king of the world. There is no great cause for wonder in all this. Once, two continents could be found in the two largest oceans of the east and west. They vanished beneath the waves, but their inhabitants moved into the underground kingdom. End quote. For Jean-Louis Bernard, this king of the world could well be connected to black magic. In this regard, he mentions the writings of Alexandra David Neal that report the existence of pseudo-lamas, a form of living dead who practice vampirism in remote lamaseries. These are old men who are dead, but who live in a state of artificial survival. They use their magic to attract lost travelers and persuade these visitors to allow themselves to be ritually slain so that the old men can obtain their vitality through osmosis during the course of a scientifically lengthened death agony. This places us somewhere between Dracula and Elizabeth Bathory. This king of the world is thus only king of the Maruts or the living dead. Bernard adds that the Marxist world could have fallen under the domination of such Maruts which would explain the heavy sadness and atony in the lands of the East. This opinion is shared by Jean-Paul Bure, who wrote, quoting, Still existing in the Transylvanian mountains is a lost Shambhala of vampirism, which is inaccessible to humans, but which is connected to the Shambhala of light by long underground passageways. This is no cause of surprise for initiates, it is connected in the same way that evil is tied to good by a network of correspondences that give wisdom its true face. Good and evil are one and the same. They share the same splendor, for truth destroys dualism. End quote. The fact remains that Osendowski linked Agartha to the question of immortality. In his view, the deep caverns are lit by a distinctive luminescence that permits the growth of grains and plants and gives people long and disease-free lives. And if we can trust the legends, the entrances to Agartha are not only to be found in Asia. Uh, Mont Saint-Michel and Brocelion Forest have also been suggested as likely spots where passages to this underground realm might be found. It would be no surprise to find that Gaston Leroux follows the same trail as Jules Verne. In Rouletabille and the Gypsies, he alludes to the hollow earth in connection with Wallachia. Interestingly, information imparted to us by René Guénon is that the Bohemians once lived in Agartha. According to Gaston Leroux, it is the king of the world who makes the king of the earth. Of course, all of this remains linked to vampirism. Quoting, there cannot be a good celebration in the depths of the crypt if there is no blood. End quote. Ren La Chateau, one entrance to the hollow earth. 
The elements of the equation have become increasingly clear. Rosicrucianism, immortality, vampirism, Agartha, king of the world. More important, with each of these elements we find Jules Verne, as if his complete opus has a perfect esoteric nature. But where does Rennes le Chateau fit in here? There are in fact several connections to the Rennes affair. Boudet defined Rennes le Ban as an island of Isis, which is the very name a Rosicrucian manuscript gives to a region of Shambhala. There also seems to have been a connection between the Grail and Wren, and between the Grail and the Hollow Earth, one of the first known texts concerning the Grail dates from the 10th century. In this work, its author, Nome Menius, spoke of a war against an unbreachable underground fortress where miracles took place. We can recall that the Grail was also connected to the elixir of immortality and thus forms part of the equation. Starting with Dionysian worship, this elixir was replaced by wine. René Guénon demonstrates how the Grail is linked to the Eucharistic sacrifice of Melchizedek. He goes on to say, quoting, the name of Melchizedek, or more exactly Melchizedek, is none other than the title used in Judeo-Christian tradition to denote the function of the king of the world. End quote. According to the Bible, Melchizedek, king of Salem, had bread and wine brought forth with which he blessed Abraham. Melchizedek is both king and priest, and his name means king of justice. At the same time, he is also king of Salem, and thus of peace. Justice and peace, according to René Guénon, are the two fundamental aspects of the king of the world, and Salem would hide the name of Agartha. René Guénon also speaks of a figure whom we already came across when looking at the Rennes-le-Chateau Fair. Jacob. As everyone knows, Jacob had a dream in a place named Luz, which he called a new Bethel, the house of the Lord. Of Luz, Genon says, quoting, It is said that the angel of death cannot enter this town or have any power there, and some claim that through a fairly singular but significant comparison its location is near al Borge, which is also the abode of immortality for the Persians. End quote. Bethel, the house of God. We can recall the phrase appearing on the portal of the Church of Mary Magdalene in Rennes le Chateau, Terribilis es locus isti, or This place is terrible. In Genesis, this text is followed by, quoting, This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven, end quote, a phrase spoken by Jacob in Bethel. It is the fact that Asmodeus is the first thing you see at the church after reading the phrase from Jacob on the lintel of the church door. Genon tells us that near Luz Bethel there is an almond tree that is hollow at its base. It is through this hole that a person can enter an underground passage leading to the underground city. An old legend of the Razes region tells that underground tunnels lying deep below the castle of Wren lead to caves where a troglodyte people have been living since the dawn of time. This race has no experience of the passing of time and the light of day, and is therefore immortal. We may ask if the white queen that haunts all the local legends in this region, who marries the white and black, Blanchefort and Rocco Negro, is not simply the white goddess of ancient times, the one who ruled over the underground world, the goddess of the transition to elsewhere, the lady of the mists. It is quite instructive to refer to the names under which she has been worshipped, Albina, similar to the name of an ancient Visigoth fortress located on the Ren Plateau, which was Albendinum, and Cardea, for the Romans who regarded her as the mistress of James, and the queen of Hinges, Cardo in Latin, similar to Cardu, the name of the mountain overlooking the entrance of the Cromlech of Ren Laban. Ovid said of Cardea, quoting, her power is to open what is shut, to shut what is open, end quote. The white goddess has also been incorporated with Isis by some, according to Lucius, but it is especially important to recall the nickname she was given, the spider. 
This is all well and good, but it is not everything. Now we must find the beginning of these tunnels, buried deep beneath the earth, that eventually reach the sovereign kingdom of the so-called Master of the Hollow Hills, as he is known to the Celts. At this moment we can recall that the former name of the peak of Bugarach, near Renlaban, was Taw's Peak, with Taw's meaning hollow. It is known that a vast network of subterranean galleries exists beneath this peak, through which the water of the region's aquifers circulate. The existence of this hydrological system was demonstrated by the research of C. Chanel in the Aquiferic Earthquake of the Eastern Pyrenees in October 1940. It is now easy to understand why Jules Verne chose the Bugarach for the family name of the captain in Clovis Dardentor, which recalls the Bugarach that is the source of the Salles and the Blanc rivers, once again an allusion to the color of the white cream, and the white island, which, according to legend, was the destination of Joseph of Arimathea carrying the grail. Of course, in order to reach it, tradition says that you must cross the waters. Andrew Thomas tells us that in Russia, among the old believers of Starovry, there is a strange story that declares that those who follow the path of the Tartar conquerors back to Mongolia will find Belovidya, the land of white waters, where holy men live in seclusion far from the turpitudes of the world. We might say that Bugarak, at whose foot the Blanc River is born, is a kind of land of white waters. Andrew Thomas pursued this notion by citing Nicholas Rourke's report of his discussions with the old believers of the Altai Mountains concerning access to this land. He writes, quoting, After a hard journey, if you have not become lost, you will find the saltwater lakes. This passage is quite dangerous. You will then reach the mountains of the Bogogork. Here, an even more perilous path awaits you. End quote. Sal and Sal's, Bogogork and Bogorak. Certainly these similarities are not mere coincidences. We are on the right trail, and it is up to the reader to follow it. This is Walter Bosley, and I just read a selection from The Secret Message of Jules Verne by Michel Lamy.